Could you imagine like climbing Mount Everest and it's this whole big journey, right? And you're up on top. You're like, yeah, you know, I made did it. it. And this bird just like cruises by, just blows by you. It's insane. What there's... if you got pooped on by a bird up there? That would be rough. I think I would be mad. You go, buddy. I'd be like, are you kidding me? I'm on the top of the world here <laughs> and I got pooped on by a bird. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be mad. We're back. Hello. Gang's all here. Welcome to the Random Theory Podcast. If you are listening on Apple Pods, Spotify, wherever you get your pods, nothing has changed for you. No. But if you watch us on YouTube, we're back together. We're back together. We were not, uh, we had one episode. That was separate. That was separate. We that was were, a good one. We were separate over yeah. Zoom. But our sign is now up. Yeah, if you're watching on YouTube, <laughs> we usually had a big stay random sign. And now we have a neon sign. That says RT. RT. For random theory. In, inside of like a beaker. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool. It's pretty sweet. We just threw it up. So hopefully it's like <laughs> centered and. <laughs> if it falls off the wall. It might, yeah, it might just like That's fall fine. off the wall. But What you been up to? Oh, man. <laughs> Dude, I have had. We could do a whole podcast yeah. on just catching up. I just listened to the episode. It came out um, Monday, yesterday. Yeah. Of the one we did right before you flew to new york and i flew to denver crazy and that was the last time we were together and that was four weeks ago yeah that was like a month ago (laughs) the last this last week has been the craziest you've had a week train wreck of a week (laughs) i my wife and i went on a trip we went to visit her grandparents in northern new york Mm -hmm. state on the way there we start we were like feeling a little sick but we didn't know why and we got there and literally we were there for two days and just realized like, oh, we're sick. Like something's up. We're not yeah. sure what it is, but we feel sick. So we decided like, hey, you know, they're old. It's best if we just we just got to go. Right. So we drove. Also, also, we drove. We flew into Newark, New Jersey and drove all the way to northern New York. Which to, is a, that's a long drive. It was a long drive. I think it was like six hours. Yeah. But anyway, so we left, we drove halfway back, and then the next day we flew back, which was a nightmare. That's a really long travel day. And we were sick at the same time. Which makes it even longer. Yeah. And uh, got home and then tested positive for COVID. Oof. Yeah. (laughs) Oof. (laughs) Which, like, luckily we're fine. It was not terrible. You got a mild version. It was a mild, yeah, it was really, it wasn't too bad. But I was like, I have outrun this thing for two years. I now. know. When I'd you texted me it. and told me you got it, I yeah. was like, no. Yeah. So <laughs> He's been doing so good about not getting it. Uh, yeah. I don't know how I never got it, but finally it hit us. Mm. Um, but we're good now. I'm on the other side. Good. I, I haven't had a fever for like nine days. Nice. And so my, we're good. The at home test was negative yesterday. So, but I am still like a little sniffly. So if you hear some. A little sniffs. nasal going on, yeah. A little sniffs. A little sniffs. <laughs> that's that's me, and I'm sorry. That's okay. We forgive yeah. you. Yeah. And then there's been like band shows in there. We yeah. played a festival. It was like there was a hurricane going on during <laughs> it. It's been, yeah. What about you? How's New York? Uh, New York has been wild. Yeah. I've seen a Broadway show, gone oh. to dinner, finding little hole in the wall places. That's my favorite thing to do in New York, honestly, is uh, find the little places, especially because we just moved to Midtown East. Mm. So it's been really cool. Michael and I are getting settled into our apartment. It was it was a lot moving in with someone, but you know, it's all smooth sailing. I'm good, happy. Good. New York is great. Good, good. Um, I mean, there should always be bumps in the road. Well, there always are. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing is ever Nothing straight is up perfect. Never. Yeah. So, I mean, I appreciate the little bumps in the road. It's how you get to know someone better. Yeah. I've been traveling so much and it takes a lot for me to say like I'm exhausted from traveling, but like I'm actually exhausted from traveling right now. Yeah. I mean, I was in Chicago, literally moved to New York that weekend that I got there and we were in our apartment we went to a wedding in Louisiana yeah and then back to New York and then I was there for about a week and a half two weeks and then we were in Chicago and straight from Chicago I came to Utah for us to film yeah 
And then on Friday, I fly to North Carolina to film with the Marines, which is like really exciting. And Very I'm really exciting. grateful for yeah. the, like the opportunity. But a lot of travel. It's a lot of travel. And then I'm back to New York and then I'm going to be flying back out to L.A. Yeah. L- I'm literally going to be home in New York for a week and then out to L.A. Yeah. To film for a super special secret project that I'm not allowed to tell anyone about no. right now. <laughs> um, and then like. And then back from, to New York and then back to here. Yeah, literally, I go back to New York and then yeah. I fly back out here for us to do October filming. Or filming, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm really grateful for it because, like, this is the thing I prayed for and, like, wanted to do when I was sure. younger was travel all the time and see new places and do cool things. But yeah. it's starting to take a toll on me. Like, I'm pretty exhausted, but that's okay. Should we get into some ratings and reviews? I think we shall. Mine comes from... I love that they put this on here, how to pronounce it. Yeah, it's Aristide. nice. Aristide. 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 That's a beautiful name if that's your name. It is. They said, this podcast is such a delight. I'm not really into science, but the topics that you two discuss are so interesting and very entertaining. You both have amazing chemistry, and I appreciate the fact that the two of you don't use cuss words when discussing the topics. Love y'all. Keep up the great work. Praise hands. 100. Heart. Fire emoji. Nice. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's very nice of you. Thank you. And we like to keep it clean. You yeah. know, that way you can listen to it with the family. Yeah. Family friendly pod. Family friendly. You can listen to it out loud at work. Yeah. Uh, and I'm glad that you're not really a science person, but you find us interesting and the topics. Interesting. Yeah. I think that's like the goal, right? Yeah. We want the diehard science fans, but also we want to just be general enough that like. Yeah. E- this is for everyone. Day, yeah. And any person can enjoy it. Yeah. It's really just like some science fast facts. So. Or just, yeah, just stuff that's like fascinating. Interesting. Yeah. My rating uh, comes from Avocado Gene. Oh. <laughs> yeah. They said, Hi, I love your podcast and your YouTube channel. Mm. Then they threw in the beaker. It's a test tube, actually. A test tube. Yeah. It's not a flask. No. This is a flask. That's a flask. On the wall. Yeah. What I'm holding in our artwork is also a, a flask. flask. Uh, your podcast is great, and I'm a longtime listener. I look mm. forward to the next episode every week. Here's the knock knock joke. Oh yes. Yeah. Knock knock. Who's there? Dog says. Dog says who? <laughs> no, a dog barks. <laughs> that one took me a minute to get. Uh, like a I dog get it. says who? <laughs> yeah, dog <laughs> says who? No, a dog <laughs> barks. Uh, they also have a regular joke. Oh. Why does a milking stool? only have three legs because i don't know because the cow has the udders <laughs> oh others udders. Udders. <laughs> oh, oh. oh wow. that's so good avocado gene thank you so much oh they ended it with i hope y'all are doing well bye <laughs> bye bye avocado gene. bye avocado gene thank, thank you, you for leaving the rating reviews thank you yes. to both of you people you for leaving the ratings and reviews you guys are phenomenal yeah. and Again, if you want to be shouted out on the podcast, yeah. um, make sure you leave a rating or review on Apple Pods because that's where you pull our stuff. And me- yeah. make sure you share this podcast with your friends as well. Definitely. And that's if you've been around for a long time, yes, you are. use the test tube test emoji. Tube. <laughs> we know that now. Test tube emoji. All right. Okay. Should, we, uh, should we get into it? Yeah, we shall. Okay. Today we're talking about birds. Another Again. animal podcast. <laughs> Flying high in yeah. the sky. So I've always had this big question about like how birds fly at such high altitudes. They're up there. Up there. Big like time. they get up there. Yeah. Uh, so mountain climbers know the feeling of trying to perform at elevation. Your lungs ache for air. Your heart races. Your legs feel like lead and your brain gets really cloudy and foggy. Okay. Uh, so just imagine how a bird feels at high elevation as they go about their high energy, high exertion lifestyles. For sure. I can't imagine. I can't I, imagine. I see you're going to mention it in here, but I just listened to a podcast about climbers on Everest. Oh, did you? And I can't. Uh, yeah. like the, I can't fathom it. I think they said in there it was like when they get up to near the top, mm-hmm. they take one step every yeah. 30 seconds. Yeah. Because they can't do any more than that. They it's, physically can't. They physically can't. So what Josh is talking about um, yeah. on Mount Everest, that's 29,000 feet. A lung full of air provides less than one third as much oxygen as it does at sea level. One third. One third. So one breath in, you're yeah. getting like not any oxygen. You're getting a third of what you'd get at sea yeah. level. Yeah. It's like I, breathing they, they through a straw. They can't climb without oxygen. Yeah, they literally they have, have to. Take to. Oxygen with them. It's crazy. 
So birds, as we know, it, are pretty majestic creatures sure. uh, that can fly very high in the sky. Yeah. However, not all birds can fly at the same altitude and height. Some birds can fly at, at incredible heights. Uh, so I was curious as to why some birds can fly so high. And like I noticed this one time over the summer, like I was sitting on my parents' boat and I was just looking up and these birds were like just so high. They looked like little specks yeah. just like floating throughout the air. So according to this article from Sanford, Birds fly only below 500 feet unless they are migrating. Interesting. It is very interesting. Okay. So migratory birds generally fly around 10,000 feet. I mean, that makes sense. It does. It's thinner. It's easier to fly. And they're flying much larger distances. Yes. So they need that easier air. Yeah. Okay. So long distance migratory birds will start out at lower heights of about 5,000 and then move on to higher heights of about 20,000 feet feet later 20, on 20,000 yeah 20,000 feet wow. however there are exceptional birds that can fly much higher than that the exceptional birds yes the, the exceptional let's start talking about migration because this is to me like like i don't know when the birds eat <laughs> like when they eat yeah how do like they might do they like come down and yeah it's a good point you know do they eat a big meal before the flight yeah like or do they serve snacks in the middle? Like in the a, midair. Like a plane? Yeah. Like I don't know. They do like some pretzels. Dude, that is, let me tell you, there's nothing better than snack time on the plane. Dude. Like we are all a yeah. bunch of two-year-olds. I agree. All sitting together on this plane, <laughs> all opening our snacks at the same time. Everybody's and it's so loud. Like a bag of chips. Yes. Or like some Biscoff cookies. Yes. So talking about migration across long yeah. distances. How do they eat I don't there? think they get snacks. I don't think they serve Biscoff cookies No. There. No. Um, it is an energetically demanding process, so birds need to conserve as much energy as possible. So here's how they deal with this. They fly at the higher altitudes where the air is much thinner, which allows them to cruise for longer distances with less air resistance, oh. a.k.a. they're kind of like airplanes. Makes sense. Yep. Okay. Another benefit of flying at high altitudes is to avoid suffering from dehydration due to higher temperatures of the air near the ground level. Oh, so it's colder up there. Yes, it's colder up there. It's way colder, way colder up, up there. there. Yeah. Um, and it just keeps them like nice and cool as they're like cruising. Yeah. Yeah. Which is interesting. Interesting. Yeah, because yeah. they're also not serving. There's just not no, a beverage there's service. There's no. There's no beverage service. They're not rolling the cart. No. Yeah. Could you imagine? <laughs> In like the uh, the birds the in like the V, and there's just one in the middle with like a drink cart, <laughs> just walking. It's like a backpack. Yeah. A bird. With <laughs> Jerry, I need some snacks. <laughs> Get me a sprite, please. <laughs> I'll take a yeah. I'll take a coffee. Yeah, that sounds great. You got a creamer. So there's two high flying bird species on record um, that fly at the highest altitude. Okay. So there is the endangered oh. Ruppel's Griffin vulture. The Ruppels. The Ruppels Griffin Vulture. Okay. And it has been spotting at, get this, 37,000 feet. Whoa. Which is the same height as a coasting commercial airplane. Okay. I was going to ask. I, I didn't know what yeah. the like, average height of a plane flight was. So. 37,000 feet. Dude, that's up there. That's up there. Wow. And then there's the bar-headed goose, which oh. has been seen flying over the Himalayans. Himalayas. Oh, at heights at nearly 28,000 feet. Wow. A goose. A goose. Okay. And to put that into perspective, like most birds fly less than 500 feet above the ground daily. Wow. these That's so far. How long... What I want to know is like if a Ruppel's griffin vulture is on the ground and takes <laughs> off, how long does it take them to hit so that we're, altitude? Yeah, we're actually going to talk about that. Oh, we're going to We're not going to talk about how long, but yeah. it's how they get up to that height. Okay, cool. Yeah, because it's actually very interesting and it's yeah. super important to how birds fly. Okay. So birds don't only fly high to migrate. They also look out for their prey from up there. Oh. Um, birds of prey can make use of their keen binocular eyesight oh. to spot prey from even great heights. So this helps them spot their prey without being detected I'll ever. Because they like come in and it's just like silent. It's just like. Poof. Yeah, from 37,000 feet. <laughs> Bonsai to the ground. Yeah. Wow. Coupled with their great eyesight, birds of prey also take to greater heights because of their amazing psychological ability to do so. So eagles, this is how they, they fly so high. So eagles have learned the ability to ride on warm thermals during noontime to gain height. Oh, yeah. So when they do this, they use their powerful muscles and flight feathers 
that provide control of their soaring at high altitudes. Okay, so they ride that warm air up. Yep, so they like, well, j- literally, that's why you see them spiral up because yeah. they're riding that warm air up and up and up and up and up. Wow. Man, you would have to ride that thing for a long time. You would. And to <laughs> hit that. Yeah, it's it's basically like the turtles in a... Finding Nemo. Finding Nemo, yeah, yeah thank r- you. Riding the jet stream or yeah, whatever. Yeah, or whatever it was, like yeah. into the, the area. The, yeah, they ride that current. Yeah. It's basically the exact same thing, but up in the atmosphere. Calabonga. <laughs> Noggins, dude. Noggins, dude. <laughs> but not all birds can fly uh, at equally at the same high altitudes. Only some birds can fly high because of special adaptations that enhance the uptake, circulation, and efficiency utilization of oxygen at high altitudes. Okay, so it's an, like an adaptation. That yes. Over time, they've developed this. Yeah. Okay. So the examples of the high flying birds are the. The Ruppel's Griffin that we talked about, the yeah. bar-headed goose, and the mallard duck. Oh, the duck. The duck. <laughs> the mighty the duck. <laughs> Go ducks. <laughs> Go ducks. The mallard duck. All right. So let's talk about these high flyers and how they breathe because it kind of blows my mind. Yeah. Um. To me, this is like the coolest. This is the, the fact. This is the thing. Besides okay. the, like these birds like being able to fly really high. So like I, yeah. I there's a graph on our notes that I, I made us. It's a good graph. It's a good graph. It's Mount Everest and it shows that it is 8,848 meters tall. Okay. And it shows basically all these birds and like what height they fly at. And it's just like so funny to look at because like it says most birds, like how we talked about, they only fly at 500 feet. Yeah. And it's just like most birds couldn't even imagine making it over Mount Everest. They're not getting up there. No. No. Like literally the only two that can make it above Mount Everest are the Ruppel's Griffin and the Bar-Headed Goose. That's so wild. Could you imagine like climbing Mount Everest and it's this whole big journey, right? And you're up on top. You're like, yeah, you know, made I did it. it. And this bird just like cruises by, just blows by you. Yeah. And it's just like soaring around at the like high altitudes. Yeah. Like that's crazy. It's insane. What if you got pooped on by a bird up there? That would be rough. I don't think I'd be mad. Really? I think at that point, I'd be like... I think I would be mad. You go, buddy. <laughs> I'd be like, are you kidding me? I'm on the top of the world here, and I got pooped off by a bird? <laughs> I'd be mad. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think about it like that. Yeah. <laughs> that's so true, though. Because, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, you live in New York now. I feel like that's just, like, a common... Oh, dude! L- sorry. Yeah. Was, the other morning, we woke up. We, yeah. So, I live on the 35th floor. Okay. Which is very high that's high that's high i mean it's not everest high it's not everest high high, but like we're high up off the ground yeah there were pigeons oh sitting on our window on your windowsill staring at us (laughs) like i literally woke up in the morning and these pigeons were just like hello they're like sup (laughs) how you doing i feel like it's common current to get pooped on there yeah but i i would not go into an everest climb expecting to get pooped on. thinking yeah like calculating that in being like well i might get pooped on up there so the birds that fly these high altitudes are able to cope with the energy demands and the severe lack of oxygen at high altitudes. So as such, they need to adapt to hyperventilation and taking in as much oxygen as possible. Oh. So like these buddies are like hyperventilating. Which in this case is a good thing. Is a good thing. Because usually that's not a, <laughs> not a good thing. Not a good thing if you're no. hyperventilating. Yeah. So in addition, they need to breathe with proper breathing techniques, such as taking in deeper breaths than birds that fly at lower altitudes. I'm just picturing birds like practicing their breathing. (sighs) All right, Jimmy, before we go up there, we need to practice our deep breaths. Take in a breath and hold it for five seconds and (laughs) breathe out. It's so funny. Yeah. And what's really cool is they have larger lungs that allow them to take in more air than other bird species, these high flyers. Yeah. But it's more than just taking in the oxygen that's important. They need to be able to distribute it through their bodies, uh, which is vital yeah. to them being able to do this. So what's really interesting is they actually also have larger hearts than other animals do of the same size. They got to be able to pump that yeah. oxygen-rich blood. So they they might be the same size as another bird, but their heart is like way bigger it's jacked up yeah yeah so most of these birds have developed an ability to also distribute more oxygen to their brains and hearts during high altitude flights and they actually have brain cells that are more tolerant to low oxygen environments which makes them more suited for high altitude flights that's really important Mm -hmm. because humans fall apart 
at high altitudes. Oh yeah, we we crumble. Yeah, your brain does not function well. No, your brain turns off. Yeah, like it literally cannot function. Yeah, they they also have smaller capillaries, which are blood vessels. Yeah, I don't know if they're smaller. Sorry, they are more tightly meshed. Small capillaries. Uh, I'm pretty sure capillaries are the small. Yeah, small blood vessels. The smallest blood, like in the chain of blood vessels. Yeah, they're the ones that like. Sp- the, the the final like spider web yeah. part of it yeah mm-hmm. yeah but these are more tightly meshed small capillaries of the blood vessels which makes sense because then the blood doesn't have to travel as far right if they're yep. more tightly mm-hmm. meshed together uh, and this actually supplies their muscles with blood more efficiently okay which makes sense like yeah. we just discussed yeah these high flyer birds uh, in particular have special modified hemoglobin which is hemoglobin. blood. Hemoglobin. Yeah, which is uh, the substance that holds oxygen in red blood cells. Yeah. Their hemoglobin molecules have a higher affinity to oxygen and thereby deliver more oxygen to the bird's bodies. Amazing. Isn't that so weird? Their blood is literally different. They have special blood. Yeah. So their their lungs are bigger. Their hearts are bigger. They have more capillaries, tightly webbed capillaries. Tightly, yeah. And then their hemoglobin molecules are different to attract more blood. They love or the, more the oxygen. oxygen. Yeah. So one of my questions was at the end of this, I was like, what happens if a bird flies too high? That's true. Like, you know, what in, if you're a normal bird? What, <laughs> what if I'm just like a penguin? Yeah. And I, don't know. <laughs> and but, I decided to take flight yeah. on a Tuesday. And I'm just like, you know what? I'm seeing those birds up there and I just want to go. I just want to be up there. Yeah. What do I do? How does that work? You launch yourself off an iceberg. <laughs> I run really fast. Yeah. Like I waddle up to the edge and jump. Just jump. Hope for the best. Yeah, but <laughs> if a bird flies too high, uh, at high altitudes, because the air is too thin for their breathing, the bird will fly to a lower altitude, which is suited for their niche. Oh. However, when high flying birds fly high, they undergo hypoxia, which they can actually cope with. Oh, so they're good. They're good. They, they get a little hypoxia, but they're yeah. like, eh. Yeah, I think f- feel like they know that's like a warning sign. Yeah. I feel like if you were a, norm- a normal bird and you flew too high, you would just like black out and like fall back down to earth maybe and like wake yeah. up. I don't really know. Because that's the thing. Like I was thinking, you know, an airplane, they, at least compared to a bird, it gets up to those t- those altitudes rather quickly. Yeah. And so, obviously, they have gauges and and meters and stuff that Mm -hmm. show, like, you're at this altitude, don't go any higher, whatever. And so, that was my thought was, like, well, how does a bird know, like, a bird, how does a bird know that it's at 37,000 feet? How does its eyes start blinking and, like, you can see, like, warning, warning, too high. Too high, go down. But, you know, it makes sense that, like, birds aren't flying fast necessarily no. so it's like a slow gradual they're just going to start hitting an area where they can't breathe as well so then they just go or down. they get exhausted and they come yeah back down. then they just float they float down a little bit yeah like, oh, okay i can i can chill this here. is better yeah <laughs> i feel fine here yeah so in conclusion okay. about the birds flying at high altitudes birds fly at high altitudes to minimize energy expenditures for either their migratory flights or for sourcing prey. And then migratory birds utilize the thinner air at high altitudes to cruise at a higher speed and with more ease. That's super interesting to me. Mm-hmm. The Specifically, like the migratory thing, that like totally makes sense. Yeah. They're going a long distance. Yep. They got to like conserve their energy and all that. Um, but the, the prey thing mm-hmm. is interesting that they're flying at such high altitudes looking for prey yeah that to me that one is like very mind-bending but like have you ever seen a hawk or something hunt i mean they dive they dive bomb they dive bomb way up yeah yeah i don't know how they do it or how they see it obviously because we don't have bird sight but like the bird sight we don't have bird eyes but i think it is super fascinating how they are able to like scope in prey essentially and just be like eat yeah they like tar- target in from like a satellite view yeah and they the way they get so aerodynamic yeah. is insane and they like tuck their wings yeah in their whole body <laughs> just gets like yeah it's really crazy to watch if you want to go look at it on youtube i yeah. highly recommend because it's it's honestly kind of insane birds man birds well, listen we've talked about quite a few wild critters yeah um and i'm never not surprised 
I know, by, right? By the animal kingdom. It's, there's it's so many, fascinating. There's so many little weird things about animals and the way they work that it's just, I listen, I hope people enjoy the animal animal episodes because <laughs> we love them and they're not going to stop. No, they're not. <laughs> the animal podcasts are podcasts yeah are gonna keep coming we are we're definitely like it's a, we're billed as a science podcast but yeah like we're like a it's like a it's like a lifestyle it's like 60 percent science yeah. 40 animal animal yeah, yeah. we're gonna try to build in some more there's been some really good recommendations from you guys there have been uh in the sure. rec or in the uh podcast rating and reviews on apple pod so if you yeah. have an idea of a podcast that you want us to do definitely. please please let us know there uh, and we will do our best to make it into a podcast because i love yeah. i love what you guys are curious about because we've uh, already done many yes we've have done been, many have been re uh, mm -hmm. recommendations from you guys so yeah so let us know in the comments because i would love to check those out and give yeah. them a look and listen because i just want to yeah. keep learning alongside you guys yeah and it's good to it's like good for us to know what you guys want to hear yeah um so we make sure that we're you know piquing your interest yeah and also it's yeah it's just fun to learn new areas because grace and i obviously have our interests and mm -hmm. we like look around those things yeah it's nice to get something from like a completely different source i love it yeah well that's all for this week i hope you guys cool. have a uh, fun week yeah full of happy things go outside and look at birds yeah go check out some <laughs> just go, go stare at a go bird. be a bird watcher <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right guys that's it hope you have a fantastic random week and we'll be back with another episode <laughs> next week you bet we will yay all right bye, bye. we're gonna go stare at birds yep yep we are <laughs> bye